I'm always delighted to debate with Mark. Uh, and actually, I did some opposition research. And I talked to his uh, colleagues at, uh, at Chelsea and Westminster to ask, um, and ask them what, what he wears to work every day. All right, and they said, here he is wearing Uncle Horatio Nelson's uh, uniform. <laughs> Actually, sometimes on Monday morning he comes in like this, when Horatio had a bad day, actually. <laughs> due to Admiral Nelson's rum, <laughs> right from the British Navy. Anyway, uh, but this is what I'll be wearing on Saturday to the, to the royal wedding. So uh, <clears throat> I'm sure he'll be well behaved at that point. <clears throat> anyway, so um, this is a very interesting virus, actually. Um, I don't know if you saw this um, recently in The Lancet, actually, a mummy from um, Naples, actually. And also, there's a, there's a mummy from Korea, about the same age, about 600 years old, 1500s. Um, this one, they thought, it would, they thought it died of smallpox, turned out it was actually hepatitis B. Um, and they were, they, the plan was to do paleovirology and date the virus back to its origins, uh, like you can do with HIV, right? They dated HIV back to maybe the, the 20s, right, the 1920s. And hepatitis C may be a little bit later, you know, to the 30s. Um, but hepatitis, so that actually they did the, um, the, uh, the analysis there, here. There's the Korean mummy, there's the Italian um, mummy. Actually, there was no difference between the, um, those viruses uh, and the viruses that are in Korea and Italy today, <laughs> nor, nor, nor the rest of the world. So the vi virus has not budged actually, um, at all, um, virologically. Okay, this is where it gets a little more interesting, actually. This is the skull of a Bronze Age warrior just discovered in Germany, in um, Geisen, I think, here. And they, uh, they, obviously, they, there, was a, there was a mass grave here. Um, and they actually isolated hepatitis B from these skeletal um, Remains and they were all they were all hepat they all had hepatitis B, um, actually, and it was about seven thousand years old. And it it actually finally uh, the older the virus, the newer the drug needs to be. So we need the new drug, TAF. But they they actually find they they finally found some DNA differences in this virus, and this uh, this virus was uh, was actually um, slightly closer to the um, uh, to the simian to the um, gorilla and chimpanzee virus. So uh, finally, um, actually, they did find some DNA differences. <clears throat> Interesting virus. So let's talk about TAF and tenofovir. I mean, I think you all know this. Um, <clears throat> this is FTC TAF, F FTC tenofovir, FTC TAF, and this is the uh, uh, exposures uh, of, of the tenofovir levels in the, in the, uh, in the serum. So um, much lower exposures <clears throat> and the serum will result in a whole different perspective. Why does this happen? Actually, Mark has this same slide. Um, so tenofovir uh, gets metabolized in the GI tract and has a short plasma half-life. About 10% goes to the liver, which is what I'm concerned about. The rest of it goes into the plasma, actually, and then is excreted um, in the kidneys, actually, where, as you know, it. Uh, all of a sudden, um, we, ha we have a, um, a, a drug that might actually cause renal toxicity, even though the last 20 years it hasn't. Um, <clears throat> and then TAF actually is about 90% um, metabolized in the liver, which makes us really happy for hepatitis B, um, and only about 10% in the plasma, and the rest of it actually um, goes out in the, um, in the, in the kidneys, um, where <clears throat> where it doesn't do much damage because there's not very, not very high concentrations. Also, well, you'll see, here's the big study uh, looking at, uh, at patients with, um, with HIV and hepatitis B patients, TAF versus tenofovir. Uh, since it's much more potent, it's only 25 milligrams, so it's less than 10% of the dose. And HPV DNA was actually um, the same, so this was not non- um, <clears throat> Not significant difference, and um, at, at 48 weeks, no difference as well. 
But this is actually makes it more interesting, and I think from the liver perspective, <coughs> makes it a superior drug. ALT normalization at 48 weeks was significantly better with TAF, probably because it, the levels of TAF in the liver are much higher. So we will, we will frequently see some folks who have um, slightly uh, elevated uh, uh, HPV DNAs, you know, in the low range, less than 100 on entecavir or tenofovir, um, can't get them normal, and then um, we will actually uh, switch them to TAF and the ALT normalizes and the, and the viral DNA becomes uh, undetectable. So it's a much better drug for renal safety too. Um, what quant quantitative proteinuria was significantly different. Bone mineral density changes were better. Mean changes in through week 72. Um, and this is a switch study, uh, actually in HIV patients who had a risk factors for bone disease or renal problems. Same basic design. Um, this is two, three studies actually. Um, and actually, the only difference in the demographics was that the, the, um, the risk factor patients had a lower uh, GFR over here. In terms of HPV DNA, um, everybody maintained their, their undetectability. Um, and there was a, they lost a few to follow up, as usual, in the second and third year. But changes in spine, bone mineral, bone mineral density, or even greater in this group. So um, the majority of patients on treatment uh, had at least one risk factor. Uh, and then longer term follow up, of course, is, is going on. Now this is a, um, <clears throat> another HBV, HIV group here with a, with a questionable first author. Um, but we'll I'll show you the data anyway. Uh, anyway, these are the two uh, study designs, um, and, the, and the conclusions were, um, were, were pretty obvious, as you'd expect. Robust um, H hepatitis B antiviral responses uh, for both, both drugs. So everybody did, did very well in switching. So overall outcomes, 85% uh, of the patients had HBV DNA less than 29, 15 had greater than I'm sorry, yeah, 15% had, had more, and actually two patients seroconverted, which is actually um, very impressive. So finally, here's a, the earlier switch trial, actually presented by Joel Gallant in Vancouver. Um, and as you can see, ALT normalization here was particularly um, um, robust uh, at the 50% level. So <clears throat> it looks to me like TAF is a much better drug. Um, Actually, in terms of liver penetration, so it makes it better at normalizing ALT, better at lowering HPV DNA, and actually safer for, for bones and for kidneys. Uh, and that's all I have to say. The rest is up to Mark.